Hello everyone and welcome to a hair taping adventure. I'm Daisy and this is Kayla from McNerdy Costumes and Props. She's Hello. super awesome, by the way. We're here today in Kayla's home environment and we will be using that as our setting to transform Kayla into a beautiful, medieval, amazing person. Yay, I'm so excited to meet you. She's already an amazing person, we're just adding the medieval parts. So. Aww. So hair taping is actually what I already have done here. This is something that you see in a lot of historical clothing styles, and particularly, it was very popular in the Middle Ages, and today we are going to be putting on some medieval clothes to go play in the snow, and so we need medieval hair to do that, because. Proper medieval snowball fight requires proper medieval hair. First of all, you're going to need some hair so you can braid it. <laughs> I have a lot of it. I hope you're ready for this. Perfect. More hair, more better. You're going to need something to hold the hair into braids like hair ties. And a hairbrush helps a lot. I usually use bobby pins to help hold it while I'm going. But since I'm another second person here, I might not need them. We'll see. And then you also need some sort of ribbon to tie your hair up onto your head with. And I like these little plastic yarn needles. So you're basically gonna sew it onto your head. Awesome. Good thing it doesn't have a sharp point, huh? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I stick myself enough with pins and needles yeah. as it is. All right, so let's start braiding. So we are going to divide the hair basically down the middle. We'll just try to make the braids somewhat even, and it doesn't matter if it's perfect or not. So how did you learn all of this? Basically by necessity for, for doing medieval reenacting and stuff. So I just kind of started looking up like how to tape hair. <laughs> and there's a lot of different variations that you see with the ribbons and stuff. I just kind of looked at the medieval portraits and tried to figure out like which types they were doing. And then a lot of them are doing this type where they just kind of do braids first and then sew it onto the head. So we're gonna do Dutch braids. So we're gonna start basically at the corner, like at the center of your forehead. Okay. And I've just taken a little bit here Okay. And then I'm going to start the braid. So I'm going to just do like one and I'm braiding underneath, right? So like I'm taking, you know, this piece underneath the middle piece. Okay. And then the left piece underneath that one. And then I'm going to pick up some hair here and add it into the next one. And then with that hair added in, I'm going to go underneath that middle strand. So it's like the opposite of French braiding. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Would thick braids like, like, is it something that holds the cap better? Yes. Okay. So any time you have like a really cool big headdress in the medieval fashions, there tends to be hair anchoring it onto the head. And you'll see like a lot of times in the Italian portraits, you'll just see the hair, um, braided and taped onto the head and sometimes the like the dutch and flemish ones you'll see the hair too oh that's neat yeah and then um kind of gives you like an idea of of how they would have done it and yeah, what the best way to do it is exactly and then what's really cool is when you have a big heavy hat like even if you have those big fancy like like how we think of the princess hats and like fantasy stories and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so those can get really heavy, but when you have your hair um, braided, it kind of acts as something you can anchor everything to and it'll just hold the hats in place. Yeah, and I've, I've never worn a medieval kirtle either, so I'm super stoked about that. This is going to be the best day. Yeah, a medieval kirtle is something like that's been on my list of things to make. But I have such a hard time, because I'm fairly newer to sewing, I have such a hard time drafting fitted things to myself. So, because of my inexperience, there really shows. Like, if you want me to make it pretty, I got you. Right. Oh, this is going to be so cool. I'm excited about it. Me your too. Hair. All right. One braid down, one to go. Yay. So we'll take, again, some hair from basically your center forehead. So it's like the corner of that side of hair and make three very small strands. 
So I usually like to start with the one by the face first for some reason. So here I'm going to take the left one underneath the middle one and then the right one underneath the middle one. And then pull up some hair here with that left one. And then take that under the middle one and we'll keep going. So is this something that somebody would have done every single day before they like left the house? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I always <laughs> right. thought, okay, so you look at like extant, uh, so, so you look at portraits and things like that and you just, their hair is always covered. And so mm -hmm. you just, wow, that must have been nice. You didn't have to do anything. But really that's not the case. Right. And I'm sure that there's some variation too. Like I'm sure someone could get lazy and not go through the whole thing. So when you do it every day though, you get really fast at it. So it starts to not be as much oh, of yeah, an issue. Oh yeah, I suppose. I tried braiding my hair every day for a long time and um, it definitely became part of my routine. Like I would just get up and braid my hair while I was getting ready for the day. Right, so now we've got two Dutch braids. Amazing. Yay. Now we're going to tie them up onto the head. So basically, we're gonna take the back here and we're gonna cross them over like that. So they're gonna go toward the opposite side of where they started. And if your hair is really short, you can just like take it right up like that and that's okay too. But we don't have to do that here. <laughs> So we're going to cross them over and then basically wrap them up. So when I do this on my hair, this is where I stop because that's the end. But here we have enough. We can wrap it back again. So we're just going to cross it there and then bring it back toward the back again. So. And then you just pin it here? Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and pin a little bit. So I like because using there's pins so much. to help just keep it in place. So I'm actually going to pin back like toward the back somewhere just to hold all the strands in place. But once you sew it down, you don't need those pins anymore, right? Exactly. Yeah. So this is why we're not really going to need the hair ties at all on this hair because it is long enough that we can just kind of stick the ends inside all the rest of what's going on here, which is awesome. And I'm gonna go ahead and take out the one pin because I like to start on that side. Or at least on me, I like to start on that side. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> so I'm gonna take this ribbon and this is about three yards or three meters of ribbon. And I'm gonna thread it onto this lacing needle or yarn needle. And I'm gonna start sewing at the back here. So I'm just gonna put the needle through the hair and I'm trying to catch some of what's stuck to the head as well. So that's basically going to anchor the hair to the head. And then I'm going to go under again. So I've basically sewn that together and then I'm going to keep going. So whenever we have the end here, we just want to make sure that it's stuck inside there. Like it's not just going to come out. And what you can do is you can sew through the braids sometimes if you feel like they need a little more anchoring. Um, on my hair, I usually just have to do that at the top by my forehead, but you can also just feel it and see like, is it going to come apart? So I think now that I'm not quite at the end of it, I think what I'm going to do is when I come up through it, I'm going to actually go through that braid with the ribbon. Okay. So that way it's theoretically a little better anchored right there. And the reason I'm doing that not quite at the end of it is so it doesn't just like 
unravel the braid. Right, that makes sense. You want to go a little above where you think, that way you've got some slack and room. Yeah. This is so cool. Okay, and then I'm going to turn you toward the front for this part. So we can see kind of how it goes across the front. Wow, it looks so good. Does it? Yeah. And it's really comfortable too. Like I was expecting it would be like tight and uncomfortable, but it really feels great. Awesome. So up here at the front, we don't have this hair coming quite all the way to the corner. That's totally fine. We're just going to sew it where it is. So we're using this. So because it's the Dutch braid, the braid is over the hair we can use that and kind of sew that as part of the braid lump, if that makes sense. So I'm kind of sewing around that braid as well. And then eventually we will run out of braid that's against the hair or against the head. So I'll just kind of sew it to your hair that's on your head. Okay. And you can do this with regular braids that are not French or Dutch. And if you do that, you would just sew it to the hair on your head. So then when you get to the center front, if you ended your hair there, like if your hair was shorter, you could go back and forth a couple times to try to anchor it better. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we need to do that because it's totally fine. Oh, wow. All right, so we're continuing to sew the hair. <laughs> Are we going to a Ren Fair? No, but I'd like to. All right, so here at the back, we have the two ends of the ribbon. So the end that I started with and the end that we are ending with, and we're just gonna tie them. So you can basically just take the ends and tie it into a bow. And then if you wanna leave it like, hey, it's a pretty bow, you can do that. If you wanna tuck it in, you can just kind of tuck it into the braid. And I find that it usually just stays right in there. Oh my gosh, it looks so great. Thank you so much. I like, love it so much. It feels so secure. So a tip for hair taping and any type of braided thing in general is that it's best if your hair isn't quite freshly washed so you have some hair oils in there to help it kind of stick mm. to itself. So that just makes it a little bit easier and helps it stay in place longer. We're ready for a medieval snowball fight, except we need to get dressed first. Yes, let's do that. <laughs> All right, awesome. Curl time. Curl time. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell and follow us on all the social medias. <laughs>